Today we canceled Jennifer Lawrence, who's a Hollywood actress, been mostly out of the spotlights and starring in a series of flops over the last several years. Now she's attempting to get back into the spotlight again in the run-up to the release of her latest film. And um, having scrupulously studied other Hollywood actresses, Lawrence knows that the best way to get the attention back on yourself is, of course, to play the victim card. The fact that she has a net worth of like $160 million does not at all hinder her in her access to the victim card. It's quite the opposite, in fact, as we will see. In, inter in an interview with Vogue magazine, um, Lawrence runs through her list of woes. Now, she begins with something that truly is tragic and terrible, and yet she manages to find the least sympathetic possible way to talk about it. So she says that she's suffered miscarriages. Miscarriages are an awful thing. We've been through that in my family as well. But then she quickly adds that she was planning to abort the first miscarriage anyway. In fact, she frames the whole conversation around the Dobbs decision, explaining that the, re the recent birth of her first child somehow has um, made her even more steadfast in her support for abortion. She says, quote, I remember a million times thinking about it while I was pregnant, thinking about the things that were happening to my body. And I had a great pregnancy. I had a very fortunate pregnancy. But every single second of my life was difficult, or rather different. And it would occur to me sometimes, what if I was forced to do this? Now, it's really hard to even fathom the derangement in a statement like this. Lawrence was pregnant with a child that she says she wanted, and yet took solace in the fact that she had the option to kill him. It's just the sort of thing that a person should not feel comfortable saying out loud, but many such things are said out loud in a culture devoid of shame. Lawrence then goes on to attack her own family, speaking of being shameless. Reading from the report in Variety, it says, According to Vogue, much of Lawrence's disappointment over Roe v. Wade began uh, being overturned is, quote, directed at certain relatives back in Louisville, Kentucky, where she'd grown up, including her father. The actor uh, had been trying to repair the family rift after giving birth. And then the Supreme Court ruling was made official and complicated matters. Lawrence processed her family drama in therapy. Quote, I just worked so hard in the last five years to forgive my dad and my family and try to understand it's different. The information they're getting is different. Their life is different, Lawrence said. I've tried to get over it, and I really can't. I just can't. I'm sorry, I'm just unleashing, but I can't F with people who aren't political anymore. You live in the United States of America. You have to be political. It's too dire. Politics are killing people. She says, I don't want to disparage my family, but I know that a lot of people are in a similar position with their families. How could you raise a daughter from birth and believe that she doesn't deserve equality? How? She doesn't want to disparage her family, but uh, she will. This already tells you all you need to know about this person. I mean, we don't value loyalty very highly in this culture, mainly because we don't value anything of value in this culture. But that doesn't let Lawrence off the hook. I mean, if you will attack your own family in public over political disagreements of all things, that tells us that you are a self-absorbed, backstabbing brat. Well, you know, I have a lot of titles and accolades to my name, uh, best-selling LGBT children's author, documentarian, biologist, women's studies scholar, you know the whole list. Uh, but still, I feel like I do not get all the respect that I deserve. And if you feel the same way, well, establish titles is your opportunity to earn the title of Lord or Lady and gain the respect that you deserve in your life. All you need is a one square foot plot of land in Scotland. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. So in your title pack, you'll be bestowed with at least one square foot, that's all you need, of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, plus an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number um, with which you can see the exact location of your land. You can even go visit it and just like stand on your one square foot plot of land if you want. Title packs from established titles are a fun and unique gift for any occasion. And there are even couple packs that uh, come with adjoining plots of land for the special someone in your life. So with your certificate, you could officially add the prefix of uh, Lord or Lady to your credit cards, your plane tickets, even your dating profiles, most importantly. And get this, established titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my exclusive link will receive a plot within a few walking minutes of mine. So we can all stand on our plots together in Scotland. I will meet you there. So depending on how many of you want to become a lord or lady, we can build our own kingdom there. Established titles is actually running a massive sale right now as well. So if you use the code Walsh, you get an additional 10% off along with all the other perks as well. So go to establishedtitles.com slash Walsh get your gifts now and help support the channel. But she isn't done. She also reveals that she has sought therapy 
over, over a recurring nightmare that she has involving Tucker Carlson. Then in the same interview, she, for some reason, confesses that she, she had her first political awakening moment by watching 30 Rock. And finally, following the script of every self-victimizing woman in Hollywood, the filthy rich Jennifer Lawrence complains about her salary, obviously. She says, inequality is something, uh, rather this is reading from Vogue again, or Variety, inequality is something Lawrence has had to contend with in Hollywood too, where she has often been paid lower than her male co-stars. The Sony hack revealed that she ha- she made far less than the likes of her male co-stars on American Hustle, while reports reveal in 2021 that she earned $5 million less than Leonardo DiCaprio on Don't Look Up, despite sharing top billing with him. Lawrence told Vogue that all actors are often overpaid, but that doesn't make the pay gap any less frustrating. She added, quote, it doesn't matter how much I do, I'm still not going to get paid as much as that guy because of my vagina. Well, no, Jennifer, it's not because of your vagina. It's because people are more likely to see a movie for Leonardo DiCaprio than for you. People will actually pay for a ticket because they want to see DiCaprio in a film. People will do that. I'm not sure anyone has ever purchased a ticket just because they want to see Jennifer Lawrence in a film. And I think she's a talented actress. I just don't think people are going to the movies to see her. Now, technically, her films have grossed billions of dollars at the box office, but that's almost entirely due to Hunger Games and X-Men. And those are both franchises that would have had the same success with literally anyone else in her roles. That's the beauty of franchise films as far as movie studios are concerned. Just like plug anybody in and they'll make a billion dollars. Now, we should also note that Vogue conducted this interview with her uh, first at an exclusive spa in Santa Monica. And they had a follow-up at Lawrence's mansion in Beverly Hills. So this is the perfect picture of modern victimhood. You have a rich and famous actress lounging in her mansion, wearing a bathrobe, which was what she was wearing for the interview, apparently, while complaining that she's oppressed by the patriarchy because one of the top actors in the business made a few million dollars more than her on a film that wasn't any good anyway. I think there is actually, for the rest of us, though, uh, an important lesson in this. Now, we know that spoiled and pampered people like to claim victimhood for themselves. And we know they do this partially to virtue signal, partially for political points, uh, partially because it's simply an internal reflex that they barely understand themselves. But at at a deeper level, I think the constant self-victimization of extremely comfortable people who live luxurious lives only goes to show that hardship and struggle are really necessary components of a full and healthy life. They're so necessary that when a person is insulated from hardship, they begin to like desire it. They want it. They make almost a fetish out of it. A life of unending comfort seems meaningless to them, and so they find ways of convincing themselves that they're persecuted. And they do this, of course, without actually sacrificing any of the comfort, because they could give up all the comfort and then really experience a margin, but they don't want to do that. Their commitment to suffering only goes so far. But it does go to, go to show that, that perhaps real hardship is, is not always something to be avoided. Because the people who succeed in avoiding it entirely only end up wishing that they still had it. And then they end up embarrassing themselves, as Jennifer Lawrence has done here. And it's why she is today finally canceled. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Matt Wall Show. If you did, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the notification button to get more content like this. If you want to watch or listen to the full show, head to dailywire.com and subscribe today. You can also listen to my podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.